My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop. So what we want to talk to, what we're going to talk to, what we're going to talk about today, it's getting hot again, what we're going to talk to, uh, three, two, one. Hi, my name is Matt, welcome back to the shop. And today we're going to talk about electric torque. So when I did a video recently about electric dirt bikes and stuff and are they shite and what have you, I was um, going on and banging on and all the rest of it about the torque that electric motors produce. And someone asked me how come that they can produce pretty much torque from standstill, from zero. Now, the one of the... Well, that's the first fuck up I've done in ages. Proper fluff that line. I don't know what's wrong with me. Any road. Let's get on with it. So the problem with your um, internal combustion engine is that it has to breathe in, com uh, process, uh, you know, a chemical reaction which is what we call combustion, and then it has to shit it back out because you have to fill a cylinder with fuel and air to basically cause this reaction to happen. And if you pull it in, then there's going to be products, you know, atoms don't disappear. They have to go back out again. And that um, in and out, in and out respiration system is the reason why engines, piston engines and wankles and so on, do not make all their torque instantly. You know, because um, it's like jogging. You know, it's like when you start off, it's like, oh, you've got to really push to get going. Then you get going, you find your pace. And when you find your pace, where well, you're not going too fast, you overheat but you're going fast enough that you're actually making progress, that's kind of like an engine. And when you look at its torque curve, you know, it might look something like this. And what's happening there is we obviously always start off here somewhere at like a thousand RPM or something like that, and then over here will be your max RPM, and then you'll have, you know, your peak torque here. So that is when your engine is breathing correctly. Um, the uh, port velocity of air coming in is in nice in the sweet spot. Your um, intake pressure pulses, you know, this rebounding of a pressure wave as soon as you slam a valve closed, that's all in timing. So your air box, your runner length, it's all in that sweet spot. It's where they designed it to be. Your exhaust pressure pulses, like back pressure and stuff like that, that's all working properly. Not much, so much for four strokes, it's more about exhaust scavenging and stuff like that. It's not a pressure pulse so much, it's more of the vacuum that's straight behind it, or the lower pressure region behind it, should I say. And everything's just working all nice and it's all sweet. You're in the Goldilocks band, it's just right. So this is where you create peak torque, where if you look at an electric motor, <laughs> what it does is, even if it created the same torque, it would do this. That would be um, or actually no really it'd go down to zero but the thing is if you look at where you require torque <laughs> the requirement band for torque is kind of like this because when you're already going fast it doesn't require much uh, torque to accelerate that much you've already have um, you already have that velocity, you've already, or already attained that velocity. Now if you're wanting to go, you know, eventually to the speed of light, then an electric motor is never going to carry you there. We should use another colour. Yeah, your that's kind of your electric, uh, no, that's kind of your electric motor torque. But it's always low down when you basically need to go that fast. You know, you're trying to go from standstill, so you are trying to accelerate a mass. And then as soon as you get up to 60 mile an hour, you're all good. And that's why the electric motor, the torque starts to drop off, where your engine is, you know, it's basically producing the torque at a higher speed, so you have to wait until you get there. So for acceleration, and that's the thing we feel the most, when you've ever said, I've been on a fast bike, or that two stroke is so much faster than that four stroke, it, you're, not, you're not talking about top speed, you're talking about what it feels like. And the thing you feel more than anything is acceleration. You know what I mean? So. This is why when you get on one of these electric bikes, you're like, fucking hell, this thing is insane. Now, where does this come from? Because that's where the, the question was, is why, why 
do electric motors have this torque? Well, we've looked at what limits the torque or how, um, where the peak torque of a petrol engine or you know a Wankel, a gasoline engine or a diesel engine, where that torque is produced and where that Goldilocks region is. Why an electric motor is the Goldilocks region right at the beginning? Or where does the where, how can it just how can it just make maximum torque from right from the get go? Well, you can have two. There's loads of different types of electric motors. You can have the outer housing rotate and the shaft stay still, or you can have the shaft rotate and the outer housing stay still. It doesn't matter which way you do it, brushless or not, and all the rest of it. Um, we'll just go with basically the the dirt bike that I did, the Alta or whatever it's called. So you have a shaft. This is the shaft that you want to rotate, and then basically you just have some magnets and you'll have a north and a south. Now you can have multipoles, you know, you have loads of these orientated all the way around, but for this demonstration we only need just the one. So what we need to do is we need to apply a force to this shaft. So we want this shaft to rotate clockwise. We want it to rotate clockwise. We need the rotation because that is where torque is. And we need a force. We need a force to be applied basically in this direction. Or that direction. That's how we want it. And if we just have these two magnets like this, what we do is we create a magnetic field with our coils around our shaft. And basically what you get is you get a repulsion. You know what I mean? So there's a repelling. You know what I mean? So that, in a sense, is your force. It's the repulsion force of similar magnetic fields. So what happens is, is that this magnetic field that starts to appear, this will repel it. It'll repel it this way. And generally, there are clutches that make sure it goes that way. Um, and it depends. You can also use power control where you can basically uh, turn one coil on just before you do the other one and blah, 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 blah. And there's loads of different ways you can control which way the rotation goes. But that's where your torque comes from. And obviously if you have loads of magnets and switch them all on around about the same time, loads of coils, you will get more and more of a kick. And it's how many magnets, and when you add them all up, how much torque is that? And you can do this instantly, that's the beauty of it. You know, switch on maximum torque. And your maximum torque, and that's why this engine, these engines don't produce any more torque, uh, engines, this is why these motors don't produce any more torque because there they can just do it but you see as the magnets are spinning uh, uh, as the as the shaft is spinning that repulsion is less of a force and the faster you go the less of a push it is it's like uh, having a wheel spinning now at first if you grab your arm you just push down it's going to spin really quick but now you have to accelerate your hand to hit the wheel to then accelerate it even more and you have to move your hand quicker than the wheel is spinning until you get to a point where you physically can't go any faster your hand is going as fast as the wheel that's as fast as you can go and in a sense that's the repulsion of the magnets they're pushing away and it gets to the point where right down at the bottom where the, the repulsion just is the same is, is the same force or the acceleration from the repulsion that's the best way to put it the acceleration from the repulsion equals the speed that you're already, you know, you're, you've already achieved. So that's why it drops down to zero. But that's why you can do instant torque because if you could have 12 poles or God knows how many poles and they all push at once, it is just, that's all it is. It's just the magnetic repulsion um, of the motors, uh, of the magnets inside that motor that are creating torque. And right from the get go, if you put enough current in it, it will repel it. You know what I mean? So the maximum, all to do with wire winding and all this, wire gauge and all this. If you can just dump maximum current in it straight off, and because we can control electricity with current and voltage, because we can control current, you can just dump maximum current into your motor and you will get maximum torque right from the get-go. You know what I mean? And this is the thing, you design the motor to say, well, how fast do you go? And for that bike, well, we don't want to go any faster than fucking 65. Who wants to go at 65, not faster than 65? Faster than 65 mile an hour off-road. Fucking nobody. You know what I mean? So then we can design and tailor a motor to do exactly just this. You know what I mean? In the future, I can imagine them using two motors. You know, for when they get, like, sports bikes and stuff. You can imagine having two motors. Where both, basically, 
they use a gearbox. Um, so you can use the torque on top of the torque of another and then you can create a stupidly fast bike. We'll talk more about that actually in the future. But um, yeah, you know, it's absolutely crazy what you can actually do and that's where the torque comes from. The fact of the matter is, is an engine has to speed up until it gets into that Goldilocks region of respiration um, where the electric motor doesn't. It's just got instant torque from the get-go. As long as you can dump the current in that gives you maximum torque, then you can do it. You know what I mean? It's as simple as that. The thing is, the only problem with it in a sense, the only problem with these electric motors and all the rest of it, is if you wanted to do this and accelerate as fast as you can to your, you know, your top speed that you require, if you want to do this, then you have to give it maximum current all the way through this range, right from the get-go, right here. Where with engines, that's one of the beauties about them in a sense, is that um, you can give it, you know, wide open throttle. And actually, wide open throttle's bad for acceleration. If you want to go as fast as you can, wide open throttle isn't the way to do it. Just look at traction control systems. You know what I mean? If you want to go as fast as you possibly can, you need to give it just the right amount of torque and then basically follow the um, you know the grip that you have at the rear wheel and that's what traction controls do they basically just send slip and then keep the power keep not the power keep the torque to the rear wheel just to that point where it's about to slip hope that makes sense and i'll see you in a bit